This is my 1984 BMW 533i. And today I'm gonna to show you guys five things that I love and five things that I hate about my car. Now the 533i was released by BMW just after the 528e in the USA, after many complaints that the 528e was sluggish and underperforming. So what did they do? They said, let's take a 3.2 liter big block inline six and put it directly into the E28 platform. Now, unfortunately, the 3.5 liter motor that came in the later 535i and 535is wasn't ready at the time. So they took the motor or borrowed the motor from the 633 CSI, which was already in production and put it into the car. As a result, this made the E28 533i the fastest production sedan in North America in 1984. Now, you guys might be saying, well, what about the M5? Well, the M5 had not been produced yet. Uh, it went into production a few years later in 1986 and was finally released in 1987. I'd have to say that my favorite thing about this generation is the boxy look from the 1980s. It shares this with many other cars and the E30 also has that special 1980s boxy look. One of the downsides of this car is the US spec diving board bumpers. Uh, these ones happen to be in pretty good shape for the age, um, but most of them, the plastic gets all faded and they look pretty terrible because they stick out much further than the European counterpart. In 1980s fashion, this car is completely covered in chrome from the strip around the windshield to the doors to the side trim, and the bumpers look chrome, but they're actually aluminum. Now a note about these bumpers, these are the US spec, known as diving boards, and the European bumpers on this car really do it justice. Uh, the US version, however, um, not as good. Okay, let's show you guys under the hood. Now you might notice that the hood opens like a normal car on the E28s, whereas the E30 had the suicide hood, or it, it opened up the other way. This makes it much nicer to work on, and I really do appreciate the normal style hood on this car. Um, if you've ever worked on an E30, it is kind of a pain in the butt um, with the hood opening in the other direction. Another interesting feature is that the right driver's side grille has a little white arrow so that you can always know where the handle is to unlatch the hood. Here's our standard 3.2 liter M30 here. One of the great things about these cars is that everything is metal, including the air box, uh, the valve cover, everything's metal. Um, they don't make anything like that anymore, unfortunately. Everything is plastic. My second favorite thing about the E28 is just how spacious it is. You can really fit adults back here. Um, you can probably fit some car seats and have kids back here. Um, compared to like an E30, my knees would have been touching or would be jammed into the back of the seat right now if this was an E30 sedan. Um, but I have plenty of room. There's about three inches between my knees and the back of this seat, which is adjusted for an adult passenger. And I also have about three inches between the top of my head and the roof line. And I'm about five foot 11. Now the trunk space that these cars offer is also enormous. Everything is bigger in every way on this car than the E30, including my favorite, the toolkit. Here's a closer look at the full-size toolkit offered in the 533i in 1984. Now the large toolkit was also in the later cars, the 535i and the 535is, but just look at everything that it came with. You have a spark plug wrench, a screwdriver, a full wrench set, a pair of pliers, and the unobtainium blue cloth. This one actually I'm not sure if it's original or if it's just your average household dusting cloth. You have a Allen key here to open your windows and open the sunroof in the event that the electric motors should fail. You also have a set of spare bulbs and the old school style fuses uh, in this nice little foam container here. I feel like it's also worth noting that the wheels on this car are not original. This is what the original TRX wheels looked like for this car. 
My next favorite thing about this car is just how driver-centric these controls are. If we take a look at the dashboard, this was one of the first times where we started to see BMW have the dashboard positioned towards the driver of the car, and ang all the controls are angled towards the driver. As we sit in the driver's seat here, you can see that the dashboard is truly angled towards the driver. This steering wheel is a little peculiar. It was only offered um, one or two years. This is known as a sport steering wheel, although I think it's pretty hideous. Uh, the later 535i and 535is had a slightly different sport steering wheel. Um, it wasn't as thick or wide, but this one definitely um, takes the award for a strange early to mid 80s retro styling. Now one of the things that I hate about these cars is that they constructed the odometer gears from a cheese. Um, not really, but the gears basically turn to cheese and disintegrate over time, um, and that causes the odometer to stop working. Um, people typically drive it for long periods of time and accumulate mileage, so you don't really know what the true mileage of the car is. Uh, sometimes the speedometer gear will also stop working, and then when you're cruising on the highway, you don't even have any idea how fast you're going. Do you have any idea how fast you were going? Uh, funnily enough, I was just talking to my friend about that. Our speedometer is melted, and as a result, it's very hard to say with any degree of accuracy exactly uh, how fast we were going. One of the other strange retro features about this car is the one and only option that my car has, and that is the onboard computer. Now, this computer, as you can see, has a series of green and red LED lights, which is quite strange. The later models had a much easier to use computer, and they did away with the strange lights on the side that look like something from a TV show that I grew up watching. Now you can see this car also has the automatic transmission and the hamster wheel for the blower motor is located behind the Star Wars looking uh, vent in the front. This car was always garaged, thankfully, and as a result, it has a very nice crack-free dashboard. Ah, uh, yes, 1984 was a simpler time. It was a time when cup holders were not a necessity. We didn't need screens and touchscreens and iPads and all of the things to keep us distracted. No, having a cup of joe was an old-timey affair, something you did with your friends at the local diner, maybe with a couple of flapjacks. No, BMW may have lost its way by continuing to add computers and losing the steering feel with electronic power steering and cup holders everywhere for beverages. <laughs> anyway, you get the point I'm trying to make. inline six-cylinder engine is the next thing that I just love about this car. It's a 3.2 liter inline six single overhead camshaft and I believe it makes around 181 or 184 horsepower which is not that much but coming from an ETA motor which only made around 120 that was 60 horsepower more. It was a huge improvement back in the day. I also just love how spacious and open the greenhouse is on this car. The, there's glass everywhere, there's plenty of room for everything. There's really no blind spots in this car and it lets all the sun in, it lets you see all the fall foliage and this car is truly a joy to own. Well, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, I have a few other cars that I can review. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, these videos are actually pretty fun to make. I will say uh, kudos to you, Doug DeMuro. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to make this and sort of give a presentation on a car than I would have thought. But um, I'm going to keep making them if you guys want to see more. And as always, thank you for watching, supporting this channel, and subscribing. I've got this scalding cup of coffee here. and Well, there's... 
there's nowhere to put it. I guess I'll just... Well, between your legs is a safe place to put the coffee, right? 